EU leaders adopted a reform treaty in October to make the union more efficient and more democratic. The present rules, originally put in place for a community of six countries, needed updating when the EU grew to 25 and then 27 members. The treaty puts the EU on a new footing to tackle issues like climate change, energy supplies, immigration and the union's place in the world. The reform treaty has to be ratified by all 27 countries before it takes effect. More than three and a half million jobs were created in the European Union in 2007. This was partly due to robust economic growth and price stability helped by a strong euro. The best economic performances were recorded by countries which have joined the EU since 2004, bringing more local jobs and creating demand for products from other European countries as well. The single currency helps stability by removing the cost of operating in more than one currency and by eliminating differences in interest rates. Two more countries, Cyprus and Malta, adopt the euro in January 2008. The EU launched an ambitious plan in 2007 to cut its own emissions of carbon dioxide and take the lead in the global fight to halt climate change. The consequences of climate change include melting ice caps, rising sea levels, droughts in some places and flooding and storms in others. The centerpiece of the EU's climate and energy strategy is a pledge to cut emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to 30% below 1990 levels by 2020, provided other developed countries do the same. Most of us take passport-free travel within Europe for granted. This right now applies to citizens of the countries that joined the EU in 2004. This highly symbolic act removes most remaining east-west border checks in Europe. The rules don't apply yet to Bulgaria and Romania, which joined the EU in 2007, or to Cyprus. The frontier controls were removed just before Christmas to make holiday travel easier, especially for those working in another EU country. The new rules cover travel by land and sea. Border checks at airports disappear in March 2008. Thanks to the EU, the cost of using your mobile phone when travelling abroad fell dramatically in 2007. The cost of making a call while roaming in another EU country fell from an average price of €1.10 a minute to 49 cents. The price for receiving a call dropped from 58 cents to 24. The European Commission drive to cut roaming rates was one of its highest profile and most popular initiatives. Within two months, more than half the EU's mobile subscribers had signed up for the new rates. The rest followed two months later. More countries around the world want the EU to send teams of observers to monitor their elections. EU election monitors were sent to nine countries in 2007. Promoting democracy is a cornerstone of EU foreign policy and election monitors help project the EU's soft power around the globe. The EU teams are seen as independent and neutral and their very presence helps strengthen local voter confidence in the electoral process. More than a thousand citizens from all 27 member countries took part in election monitoring missions in 2007. Households across the European Union can now choose their electricity and gas supplier. Under a new law, you can shop around to get the best price and supply conditions from your current supplier or a newcomer who's entered your home market. Consumer choice and the ending of monopoly suppliers of gas and electricity has been a long-standing EU priority. Every country has a regulator whose job it is to ensure that suppliers operate correctly and provide the services promised to their customers. Under a new deal signed this year, European airlines will be able to fly passengers to and from any destination in the United States and any destination in Europe. Under this so-called Open Skies Agreement, airlines will be able to set their own prices free from government control. 
The result is expected to be more choice and cheaper fares for travelers. Similar liberalization of air travel in Europe in recent years has created many new routes and brought prices down as national airlines have competed with low-cost carriers. Experts at the World Health Organization say that only in two EU countries, Italy and Greece, do people eat enough fruit and vegetables. Now the EU is doing its bit to encourage the rest of us to follow a more healthy diet. As part of a new program to improve the production and marketing of fruit and vegetables, it provides incentives for more organic foods, grown without artificial or chemical inputs. Another part of the program funds projects to encourage children and young people to eat more fruit and vegetables. The EU is keen to safeguard consumer interests in high-tech sectors. This was confirmed in a landmark case in 2007 involving computer giant Microsoft. In September, judges at the European Court in Luxembourg upheld a decision by the European Commission in 2004 that Microsoft abused its near monopoly for PC operating systems by preventing data exchange with its competitors and bundling products together to limit consumer choice.